Hi, I'm Mel Pickup, Chief Executive of Bradford Teaching Hospitals, and welcome to the weekly news roundup from Across the Trust. This week, we're looking at ways of managing diabetes during Ramadan, which starts next week. We'll also be hearing from students on some brand new placements that have been created in physiotherapy. And new figures reveal just how many babies were born in Bradford during lockdown. But first, more innovation is taking place at the Trust as a result of COVID-19. In A&E, we're creating one of the country's first high dependency units with negative pressure rooms. This will help control the infection even more rigorously than before. Here's lead consultant in the Accident and Emergency Department, Dr. Dave Greenhorn, to explain more. We are currently replacing the high dependency cubicles with sealed independent cubicles, which are negative pressure cubicles. So they'll be fitted with a, a negative pressure pump, which will help suck air out of them, filter that air and then bring in clean air from the outside. That will prevent any infection escaping those rooms and reduce the risk of cross-contamination. Each of those cubicles will also be fitted with a sliding sealed glass door so that that enables the staff to have maximum visibility of the patients and each room will have um, high fidelity um, monitoring which will be also centralised so that the staff can keep a close eye on the vital signs of the patients and directly on the patients themselves without having to continually go in and out of the rooms, therefore minimising the risk of further contamination again. Thanks, Dave. They're great. And I look forward to seeing them start being used in the summer. Now, next week sees the start of Ramadan when the Quran requires Muslims to fast from sunrise to sunset. However, for those living with diabetes, fasting can cause health problems, including hyperglycemic episodes or hypos, where blood sugar drops too low. So it's sensible to discuss fasting with your diabetes team. Here's diabetes dietitian Aisha Sheikh to tell us more. With Ramadan approaching, it's important for our patients with diabetes to be able to fast safely, and this means keeping blood glucose levels within a healthy range. Fasting can cause blood glucose levels to drop and cause a hypo. Therefore, it's important to test blood glucose levels regularly during the fast to help spot these hypos. Testing your blood glucose levels does not break the fast and helps keep you in control of your health. Hypos can be dangerous, and it is important that you break the fast to treat it. If you are taking medication for your diabetes, you are likely to need advice about altering the timing or dose of your diabetes medication for Ramadan. Fasting is not recommended if you are pregnant or have kidney or heart failure. If you have any concerns or worries about fasting during Ramadan, do get to in touch with us. We have a helpline that you can call us on. I hope you have a healthy Ramadan. Ramadan Mubarak from me and my diabetes team here in Bradford. Thanks, Aisha. That's really helpful advice. And the number for the helpline is on the screen now. Now let's have a look at what else has been creating headlines around the rest of the trust. And what a beautiful piece it is. Thank you again, Lewis. It will really brighten up our walls. Now, as a teaching trust, we're proud of spotting new educational opportunities. Not only have we created new placements for occupational therapists in ICU, we've also developed leadership placements for physiotherapy students so that they can experience all the aspects of the role of the physiotherapist. Here's therapy coordinator at inpatient therapy, Catherine Ellison, and two of her students to tell us more. These students have come to see how things work across um, different areas of our department. So looking at things from a leadership and a management point of view, it's been really helpful to allow students to see 
how we as a trust manage the bit the bigger picture the service it's been a fantastic opportunity to allow me to build my leadership and management skills which we might not normally get that kind of opportunity on a normal clinical placement uh, so being able to independently manage your own schedule um, has been challenging but also a skill that has been worth developing especially going into a role in physio it's a really good opportunity if you know that you want to work in the NHS setting, if you know that you want to work alongside team leaders and work your way up to become a team leader or a senior, but it's definitely a really good opportunity and I would recommend it 100%. There's massive opportunities to, to see things in a slightly different, different way, um, which, which would be a really positive thing for anybody coming into um, a career within the NHS. Thanks all. It's great to see students being able to experience different aspects of clinical life. Well, that's it for another week. As usual, please don't forget, you can catch up on all our news updates on our social media channels, Twitter, LinkedIn and Facebook. We leave you with pictures of buildings in Bradford that will lit up blue on Wednesday to celebrate a key milestone in the local COVID-19 vaccination programme. 250,000 local people have now received their first doses. I will see you next week. Bye for now.